listening to Living with ADHD and CPTSD, available on Apple and wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome to the final edition of the four-part series with doing four-part processing or four-step processing with your parts. This is another CPTSD episode. Okay, so yesterday we did um, the first step in the four steps with my fear part, and I've been a- I was able to make it long enough so that I was able to just start on step two today and we'll see if we can get further maybe to step three or four. Um, My plan, and this is exciting news for my show and I hope for all my podcast listeners and subscribers, if I do not get to the end of my processing after today's episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out bonus soft uh, bonus podcast for the rest of it. So, and so you'll be able to get the remaining amount for this four step process with my fear part through my subscription on Apple. So, if you really find that this is extremely helpful for you and and very beneficial, then I recommend that you subscribe to my podcast, and then you'll be able to access all the bonus off bonus podcasts. I keep wanting to say software. Excuse me. Yeah. And the idea and my plan, and I am going to do this, is I'm going to do live or real-time recorded podcasts of processing. So I'm going to do multiple processes. So there's going to be probably over time hundreds of recordings of my processing in bonus material available only to subscribers. So if you find that it is beneficial to you as a person with CPTSD, then I definitely recommend subscribing and getting all this bonus material that will be available. Because even if you, if, even if you have a, a therapist, it is definitely helpful to have another person's perspective and examples of processing even if and even if you don't use the structural dissociation theory this would be extremely beneficial to you because we all have to do work and processing and help heal from our cptsd and our trauma and the more out there that's available the more help and the faster that you'll be able to heal So there's going to be multiple episodes in bonus format that will be available. And I definitely recommend, if you really think this will be helpful, then subscribe and listen to these these podcasts. They They will be available in subscriber format only. They will not be available to the public for free. So, now on to our show here. Okay. So, I finished step one with my fear part where I did some investigating and learned about them, you know, figured out who, who they are more, learned more about that part. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do step two, which is of course, ex- feeling, you know, feeling their fears, their pain, their struggles, uh, feel their emotions that they are experiencing they are expressing and showing me the adult. So I'm going to get that started here. Okay. All right. Okay. Fear part. Let's get into this. I'm fear is obviously is, is extremely strong fear uh, emotion. It is extremely strong and very powerful and it is, highly influential when it comes to how I make decisions and live my life on a regular basis, day to day, or even month to month. 
and in relationships and in work and friendships and important decisions in life like buying a house or a car or buying something that is going to be beneficial to your life every day. Fear plays a large role in helping you determine whether or not it is the right thing to do. So, obviously he feels scared. He thinks that I am in danger if I do things that potentially are potentially di difficult and might result, result in major life changes or disappointment or heartbreak and also can not understand that doing things despite our fears can be extremely beneficial to our lives in so many ways. He feels a lot of fear and scared. He's very scared and he's extremely anxious and this part feels so much stress and so much anxiety when he's when things that are difficult start to come up for him. It's extremely hard and can be very painful and very hurt hurting and extremely emotional in so many bad ways that he feels these these emotions and it over it becomes so overwhelming and so strong and so difficult to understand and because he doesn't understand the reality of what these this fear can be and what it means is he gets extremely scared and overwhelmed and the feelings are so unbearable that he uses his strengths to allow us to be safe at least that's what he thinks is important in our lives in my life excuse me he thinks it's very important for me to be to not take do things take risks to be hard to do hard things and to be bold and jump in and instead to fall back and hide under the bed covers or to say no right away instead of thinking about it and realizing that there is a good potential for this to be extremely beneficial to him and to me. It's difficult for him to do it. He feels so scared and so overwhelmed. It's a very strong feeling. It's extremely scary and you feel it throughout your body. I feel this fear. I feel this scared, sad feeling that he has. It's, in, it's extremely intense and it's very strong. And I feel it throughout my body, but I feel it mostly in my head. It, it's like a warm sensation. It's very uncomfortable and it's very stressful because it reminds me of so many things that I was afraid of and that I was so scared to deal with and to confront. And instead of facing my fear, I would run away and hide or pretend or lie or do something different or do the safe thing to avoid the feeling. I would feel that f feeling and that emotion, that scared motion in my chest it would it would fluctuate throughout my body and it was very strong and very deep and it was so hard to deal with that i would often dissociate or try to zone out and not think about it either pretend that it's not there or i would find something that i could do anything that i could find immediately around me that would take away the feeling, that scared feeling. I would watch a movie. I would go buy a bag of chips or candy and I would eat it all. And the good feeling, the sugar rush and the feeling that you would get from that candy or that, that junk food would overpower that feeling of fear. And when I would get strong enough 
to start to do it. Like this one time a number of years ago in my very early 20s, I saw this attractive girl in the hardware store. She was a beautiful blonde, very pretty, very attractive lady or girl. Sorry, lady is for older women. At least that's what I've been leaved. My apologies. This very attractive young girl who is, in my eyes, so beautiful. I got the nerve. I drove to the store. And I sat there. I sat there for 20 minutes at least. And the fear and that scared feeling and that anxious feeling, the bundle of nerves flowing throughout my body was so scary and so overwhelming that I almost didn't do it. I almost didn't go in. His feelings of fear and, and scared and that anxiety that flowed throughout was so strong and so intense and so like it, the wide range of feelings that came from it were so incredibly strong. I feel you. I can feel how incredibly crazy that feeling was to the point where it was so, it was just too much that I had to turn away. I turned that car on and I turned and drove back home. And immediately I had a sensation of relief, a calming feeling. It was like I was telling my part, it's okay. You don't have to face those fears anymore. We're not going to do this. And all that fear and anxiety and that intense emotional pain and suffering that I went through for that 20, 30 minutes disappeared. Sure. He was protecting me. He thought he was doing the right thing. He thought this was better than getting hurt and feeling the pain of rejection and the pain of being sad because it had happened so many times before, or at least that's how he felt and believed that it would, which is why he's so scared to do something bold, like go and ask out an attractive young girl. I feel and remember the time a few years ago at a wedding for a cousin of mine. I remember walking in and a few minutes later I saw across the room to my eyes the most incredibly beautiful woman I had ever seen to that point. She literally looked perfect to me. She had an amazing color. Her hair was incredible. Her dress, her body, her face, her smile. It was the most amazing thing I had ever seen to that point. It was, it was like overwhelmingly, incredibly awesome and amazing. I felt so blessed just to see her in the same area as me. I so wanted to go and ask her to dance. I wanted to get to know her. I wanted to talk to her. I wanted to find out who this person was. But my fear part kept making up excuses, kept making up reasons, kept being so afraid that all I could do was sit there and look at her, glance over my shoulder and think about a future which could never be and which would never happen because it was too scary and too crazy to do. I kept making excuses like we don't live in the same city. It will never work. She's probably so much younger than me. It'll never work. She's not my type. She's not my class. I don't fit into her to her level of perfection and, and good looks. It'll never work. And I believed these thoughts and these feelings along with that scared anxiety stress feeling of I'm not worthy. I believed it all. I never once 
tried. It was too much. I couldn't even get to the point of getting up to do it. Sure, I walked by her to get a closer look. But I could never go up to her. I never, ever said anything. I never said a single word. And I didn't even ask my cousin who that was. It was just too much. There was too much fear and anxiety. And I was way too scared to do it. I feel you. Fear part, I feel you. I feel how scared you were. It is scary. It's very scary and extremely anxious. And the pain and suffering and that sadness that you felt when you walked away that night and you went home. It didn't feel good to walk away. This time... You were feeling bad and you were feeling sorry for yourself. Because like every other time, in every other situation, for the majority of your adult life, you did not try. Instead, you allowed your fear to take over and stop you from doing anything. Doesn't mean that it could have ended up being the, the woman of your dreams as it obviously was not but it would have been neat to be able to try to get to know someone even if it was just for the night just to talk and have a good chat and and be friendly and be social but your fears were too strong and i know that you lived to regret that and sometimes you still do there are days i know you think about it and you wish you had made the choice to go and talk to her and dance with her and get to know her, even knowing that there was probably no chance to ever have any kind of a future. Just the experience and the opportunity that you could have had would have been life changing. It could have created a sense of confidence, a sense of ability, a sense of self-worth knowing that you can do this. But you didn't. I understand and I feel the pain and the anger inside knowing that you couldn't do it. Yes, I know that you were trying to protect me from rejection, from the pain of being told no thank you, or even being laughed at, potentially. That was so strong and so powerful and so overwhelming to you that it was in your mind, safer to not do it, to not even try. I understand and I feel that. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that that's how you felt. I'm so sorry that that's what it ended up being, that you weren't able to take that next step. I'm sorry that you were too scared and so afraid of rejection that you weren't able to go and say hello. I understand. I feel you. And I, I know how hard it was. I know how long it took for you to finally move on. To finally realize that that's just the way it is and there's nothing you can do. You can't go back in time and change your mind. I get it. The fear you feel today in your current relationship with your girlfriend. I congratulate you and I am very proud that you were able to overcome your fear when it came to meeting her and telling her you love her and being with her. And even taking that incredibly bold and courageous step of moving in with her, that was so hard to do. But you were amazing and you were strong and you were incredible at that moment. You have grown so much in the past years of existence. But I realize that there's so much further to go still. I'm sorry that you still feel pain and you still feel scared to do things because it's too much. It's too overwhelming for you and you feel safer 
not doing it. I get this. Sometimes these fears are so strong inside and feel so intense all over that you just can't do it. You can't take that step. I get it. I feel it all the time. I know you're trying to protect me. I know you're trying to stop me from getting hurt. I know the pain and the reminders of your past are always there whenever something big or important or stressful and you are afraid to do come up. I get that. And I thank you for doing this. I thank you for being concerned and being strong enough to look after me and to try and protect me today. And I thank you for protecting me in my past. I know it's hard. I know how hard it can be. I get how strong fears can be, how scared it can be to take a step, to do something that is incredibly scary, but in the end can be so beneficial and so amazing and so incredible for you. I understand. And I'm sorry. I really am sorry that it's like this. Together, you and I will work on this. We will continue to work on being strong and trying to overcome our fears. It's going to be a hard journey and it's going to take a lot of work. And I understand, but we're going to work on this. We're going to make this work and we're going to do what is necessary so that we can heal and we can be less afraid to take steps that are big in our life. Steps that determine whether or not our future is the way we want it to be or if we have a future that has nothing because we're too scared to try. I understand. It is hard. It is difficult. Yes, I know. But we can do this. We can make this work. Thank you for sharing those emotions with me. Thank you. I understand how it feels to be afraid. To be so afraid that you are not able to take that step. I understand and I feel you. It feels hard. It feels scary. It feels intense everywhere on my body. The emotions are strong and are fast and are extreme. They are scary. Indeed, yes, they are scary. And I get the anxiety that comes from it. And I also get how angry it makes you because you feel like a failure. You feel like a loser, like a nobody. Because once again, like every other time, we were not able to overcome our fears and try something new, try something fun, better, different, that we felt could benefit our lives. And then yet we failed to do it. I understand that anger. I get it. It is so frustratingly deep and hurtful and scarring. I'm really sorry that that's what happened. I know it's going to be so difficult to come back from all this repeated failures and repeated intensity to the point where we couldn't go on, where we had to turn and run rather than face it. I get it. It is unfortunate and it is scary. It's extremely scary. The feelings inside from it are so strong that it almost feels like you're sick. Like you can't stand up. Like you have to lay down and you have to try to zone out and you have to try to think about other things or pretend that there is nothing to be scared about, but it doesn't work. It's never enough because it's there always. I understand. 
Again, I am so sorry. Thank you for sharing your emotions. Thank you for sharing how you feel, how this makes you feel. It is very strong and brave of you and extremely courageous to be able to express these feelings and these thoughts and words to me. That alone is incredibly strong of you and amazing and shows great potential and great character for you that you can do this, that you can tell me about your feelings and how scared you are and how scared you were in the past. You are an amazing, strong part, a beautiful part with deep purpose and fortitude and strength and passion. You are such a passionate part because you are so strong in your beliefs and you won't let anybody ever tell you wrong. You won't ever, you won't ever let anybody tell you that this is wrong, that you're a fool or that this is stupid. Your ability to stand up to these wrong things and incorrect thoughts are so amazing on its own that you are able to do that. It's amazing and you're incredible. I've never realized how much strength you have. Sometimes we do benefit from not doing what we are scared of. It always has its benefits. Sometimes we're right. Sometimes it is a good idea to run away. I appreciate the fact that you have been so strong and so bold for me throughout all these years of my life and that you have looked out for me and took care of me and tried to protect me. Even when it wasn't needed, you did try to, you did protect me. You kept me safe. You were always looking out for me to make sure that I was able to continue living and continue doing my daily routines. We do need to grow and we need to flourish and we need to find new courage and new strengths to move forward and to continue our growth in our life or lives, sorry. I think it is time that we can do this. I realize that it's not an easy thing to do, to change the way we think and feel and believe and to adjust how we act in the moment when we are faced with a fear. I get that it's not an easy thing to do, but we will together work on this. We will get there. Doesn't matter how long it takes, however we have to do it, we will get there and we will benefit together from making a courageous and bold, strong move towards a new future. I know we can do this and I am so thankful that you are around with me to experience this. I thank you. Thank you for your help throughout my life. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for sharing those emotions and those feelings that you have had for all 44 years. It must have been incredibly difficult to face yourself after not doing what could have been helpful or could have been beneficial for us. I understand. I understand that feeling of failure and that feeling of frustration and anger and not feeling worthy. I get it. We're, we're going to do this. We are together strong and brave and bold and incredible 
And it's so amazing. We can do this. You're so amazing, and I love you so much. You are an amazing part, and you've done so much for me. Thank you. Thank you for being there and for looking out for me all the time. Thank you. All right. Well... I'm basically out of time, unfortunately. I wish I could have gotten to step three, although I sort of did, but I didn't really focus on step three, but still. Okay, I'm going to continue this. I am going to get to the end. I am going to do step three and I'm going to do step four. It will be available in bonus material for subscribers only. So if you want to find out and listen to the last two steps, then please subscribe to my show. There'll be bonus material. There's going to be early access to all episodes, both ADHD and CPTSD related podcasts. And there's going to be tons of bonus stuff, bonus material. I keep saying software. Haha. <laughs> bonus material. And I'm going to have bonus interviews as well. Special guests that are going to be bonus related. Some of them will be available to the public, but a lot of them will be on subscriber base only. They're going to be amazing interviews. I'm going to have people on there. They're going to be so helpful and so incredible for everybody that you're going to, you're not going to want to miss this. You're going to want to stay tuned because it's going to be very helpful for you. You're going to love it. Okay, so next week will be regular programming. Friday will be an ADHD episode. And then the next, that Saturday after, will be a CPTSD related episode. If you want to contact me, you can contact me at, on Twitter. My handle is at ADHD and CPTSD. If you want to contact me via email, I have a new email address. It is living with ADHD and CPTSD at gmail.com. You can contact me there. I will respond back. If you want to be a guest on my show, if you just want to compliment me on my show that I've been doing, I'd love that too. You can go to ko-fi.com, ko-fi.com, and you can donate there if you really think that this show is it very beneficial and you love this show you can donate monthly or yearly or sorry monthly or a one-time amount tell others about this show if you think there are people out there and i know there are maybe they just haven't said anything but maybe you know friends who are dealing with traumatic relation issues and they're having a hard time tell them about this show Tell them about the podcast. Tell them about the website, www.livingwithadhdandcptsd.ca. Show them. Show them all the episodes that are available. Tell them how much it's benefited you, how much it's helped you to learn and understand your CPTSD or your ADHD. Bring them into the show. Maybe they'll love it. Maybe they'll be so excited and so thrilled that there's somebody who experiences this too that they'll stay tuned and and listen to every episode. Spread the word. Spread the show to your friends, even to your family. Subscribe to the show. Get access to the episodes early. Get access to all the bonus material. I want to help you out. I want to make your life easier. I want to give you a path that is required for you to do what is necessary to make your life healthier and easier and better for you. Don't let your trauma control you. You control your life. Okay. That's it. Stay tuned next week. Back to regular programming, as I said. All right, everyone. Have a great week. Bye now.